Okay. What is different about number four here? Do you have it open? Ah. Maybe you could share what has it there. Yeah, what's different about... David! David! What's different about number four? Yeah, it has a frequency in it. That's the difference, isn't it, has it? Oh, wait, we're open it there. Uh, 106. Oh, sorry. Okay. What is the difference between number four compared to 123? Oh, uh, number four is the light of the Yeah, yeah. Um, I think what I'll do for number four on standard deviation is I'll use this formula. Um, yeah. That minus that. Yeah, yeah, square root of. So, first thing I'll have to get is I'll get this. Yeah. Which will be 0 times 5 plus 1 times 8 plus 2 times 1 plus 3 times 2 all over, no, no, not 6. All over 5 plus 8 plus 1 plus 2. So that's 16 over 16? No, no. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So that's 1. Okay, well that's nice and convenient. So then what does that make of this fella? 1. Okay, now to get this guy. You square the sales and multiply it by the frequency. So, Hazard, listen carefully for the next, this part here. It's if you look at the table as well, actually, 0 squared times 5 plus 1 squared times 8 plus 2 squared times 1. And what's the last one? Uh, three so it's 3 squared times 4. Is that 36? No, that's oh, sorry, thank you, thank you, times 2. That's 18. No. Is oh, yeah, 18. 18. Yeah. All over... 5 plus 8 plus 1 plus 2. Right? Is that 30 over 16? Yeah. Which is 15 over 8. 1.875. So, so the answer is sigma equals square root of this number minus this number. 0 0.875. So what's that, 0 0.9 about? Yeah, 0.9 mm -hmm. Yeah. Not too, too bad, huh? Is that okay for you, Hazel? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Because I, did, uh, I didn't count the 5 and the 0. Like oh, yes. This was our discussion yesterday about 0. Yeah. It is a number, trust me. So we do count it. <coughs> hmm? Square root of a number less than 1 is a bigger number. Because if you multiply 0 0.9 by 0 0.9, you get a smaller number, 0.8 here. <coughs> Square root of a number less than 1 is a bigger number. Hmm? True. It's true. <laughs> right. Think about it, uh, Artemi. Square root of a quarter is the square root of 1 over 4, which is 1 over 2. A number bigger than 1 over 4. Yeah. Makes sense, story checks out. Okay, what's next? Page 104. 104, what lesson's that? Averages. Number 9. Number 9. Mm. Yeah, number 9. Oh, Nikita, why are you so late? <laughs> Nikita.
Schieße. Yesterday, I get a monthly summary of my website's activities. It tells me where my most visitors came from, how long they spent on the website, you know, top locations, all that. It also tells me where I've gotten the most attacks from, attacks. like web at website attacks, you know, attempts to hack. Oh. And country number three was Ukraine. Why is country number one? I'll have to check now, but I was looking at it like it's like number one. Oh, I can't remember what it was. It didn't surprise me. Like whatever it was, like <laughs> China or something. And then like number two, well, number three, Ukraine. Was, hmm, interesting. I do have three Ukrainian students. I wonder if there's a connection there. Are they trying to access my server? Get all my emails or something? Um, right, number nine here. So. What's tricky about number nine on that page on averages? What's yeah. the small problem there? You have to get the average of zero between zero and one. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a it's a tiny bit harder than that even because you might think the first number. Well, what would you use as the first midpoint for the first class? One plus twenty-four divided. One plus twenty-four. Yeah. One so plus twenty-four. Zero. Zero plus twenty-four over two, and the next one. Twenty-five plus fifty divided by two. Yeah, that's okay for all of them, except the first one. There's going to be a tiny error if you do that, not a big error, and maybe even an error that NCUK don't care about, but still a small error. Let me explain why. So if you look at the first interval, it goes from a height of zero up until what height? Not 24 actually, 24.5. And the next one then is 24.5 to 50.5. And then the next one is 50.5 uh, to 75.5. And then 76. Uh, sorry, 75.5 to 100.5. And then the last one is 100 and, 100, sorry, 0. 0.5 to 199.5. Now, what you told me a minute ago will be all right for these four. You'll get the same answer. So, uh, what's the midpoint here? I think it'll be 37.5. And that's the same answer as what you guys told me. Uh, what's the other three midpoints, please? 63. Thank you. 88. Yep. 150. 150? Yeah. No, that doesn't sound quite right, has it? Yeah. What's this one, David? Yeah, we have that. The same. It is 63? Yeah. Okay, sorry, how's that? And the next one? 88. 88? Yeah, 150. 150. Yeah, but my numbers are like... But the first one will be different. Yeah. It'll be 12.25. Whereas, I think you said 12.5. Yeah. But like... Uh, Tiny difference, though. These numbers are like without uh, both sides. I know, we have to add that in. We don't want any gaps. Yeah, class, class width. We, we don't want any gaps. Um, if I said to you a student has a height of, whatever it is, there's a height of a tree. Yes, if I said to you a tree has a height of 24.7, which box would that go into? Second one, yeah. It's clear now that I have the point 0.5 there. Uh, this is the X and then the F. What's the F, sir? 5, Five four, 4, 3, three, two, three, two, three, two, three one. 1. Oh, did I do that? 5, 4, three, two, 1. Okay. So do we have to do the point 0.5? Okay. Do we have to do what? The point 0.5 to change the number to point 0.5. If you don't, your answer 
will be a tiny bit different. So small that it might not matter. The only difference here is with this guy. That would be a different number. But all these other numbers will be the same. And the difference here will only be a difference of 0.25. Yeah. I don't think that will matter much. Now it might because that's also the mode, the most common data point. So well, we might want to fix it properly. Anyways, let's calculate the uh, average here. Um, 12.25 times 5. What is it? 61.25. Okay. 150, is it? 189, is it? Come on. Uh, 88 times 2, 190, 176. Am I getting these right? Yeah. Plus 150. Yeah. So what does that equal? Four sounds like a believable number to me. That is the other thing. Except that that's not that. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's like. What you get? 48.08. Mm, so it's a little bit different. 48.1 then. I got 48.5. Yeah. So your number is a little bit bigger because you used uh, 12.5 here. Whereas we should really be using 12.25. Uh, we have to square this as well. So when you square that, Peru, what answer do you get? Answer squared. Well, he's going to be a little bit more accurate because he still has the full decimal. Full decimal? No. Peru, I said type in answer squared. Now you've cleared from memory the answer. <laughs> Does anyone have the original answer still stored in the calculator and then just press answer squared? Yeah. The original answer is 48.4. <coughs> no, you keep telling me it's 48.0. 48. Oh, eight. 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 48.416. Oh, six, six, six. Yeah. Oh, cruel. <laughs> all right, all right. Square that answer, what do you get? 2.5. Two, three, Eight, two, three, four, four, point one, seven, three, six. One, seven, okay. Right, right. Now, what do I need to do next? Do more. What's the next step? Uh, the median term. Next step? No, what? Wait. I need to get the x squared. Don't I? Yeah. Right. Oh, I don't know. Oh, wait, no, I know what 150 uh, squared is. Let me, no, don't this tell me. Don't tell me. Zero. Zero, two, F. Uh, is that 150 squared? Yeah. Okay, why are you sound surprised? <laughs> uh, right, but the other four, the numbers are too small, so I can't do them. Uh, I'll have to let you use the calculator. I, I can only do the big numbers, sorry. You said those numbers, uh, yeah. uh, this question is only for the mean, median, mode. Oh, no standard deviation. No. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. Thank you, Hazard for pointing that out. So uh, I think you were asking me this, Alex, isn't it? So I actually, I don't even need to do this one, sorry. I, I can stop here. Uh, what do we say, about 48.1? One. One, was it? Mm. Or no, 0. 0.4? 48.4. Okay. Fine, now, well, three significant figures would be this. Now, that's the mean. How do I get the median? Yeah, yeah, how many do we have here? 5, 6, and 8, 9, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So if I have 15 numbers, the middle number will be number 8. 8 is the middle one. And where will the 8 one be? Yeah, in this bracket here. If you start counting here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you'd end up in this one. Uh, so the median is this number. That's the median. 
And what's the last one we need? Mawad. The Mawad. And which is the most frequent here? Yeah, or 12.5. You see, this is where it's a little bit different. Uh, what did I say in the book, actually? Did I? Yeah. Good for me. All right. The minimum and the maximum? Yeah. Oh, it's hard to know what the minimum and the, the maximum is. Um, you could say the minimum is likely to be 12.25 or some number close to it. But I mean, it, you can't know for certain. And the maximum? The maximum is likely to be 150 or some number close to it. So it's going to be like 12.25 plus 120 or what's it? Say again? 12.25 plus 120 over 2. Oh, you're asking me, sorry, for the midpoint estimate. Yeah, yeah. Now remember, uh, Haza and Alex, all these calculations are estimates because... We don't know what the original five numbers were, do we? We just know we had five numbers between zero and 24.5. So we are approximating by saying that those five numbers are all about 12.25 each. Um, notice how has a, we didn't go minus 0 0.5. Well, what's the reason for that? Yeah, that's a better reason. Yes. I don't know if you've done this in biology yet, Dave, but trees can't have negative heights. They generally grow upwards and not into the ground. No. Right. You got that? What, what might we need to see next? Ninety-six. Back in time. Ah. Ah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that was a tricky one, wasn't it? Page ninety-six. The addition rule. Last question. The probability of event A is the same as the probability of event B. Okay. So I could try and draw this Venn diagrams. Maybe it's possible. The probability of event A is twice that of the probability of A and B. Okay, so if I call A and B X, and I say the probability of A is twice the probability of A and B, which I'm calling X, what should I write here? X plus 2? X over 2? No. No. Now listen carefully, listen, listen. The probability of event A is twice the probability of A and B. No. 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 X squared, no. It is. Again, desperate now. Something over two? Yeah. No. It's X. 
What? Look at this diagram. Hey, look at this diagram. What's the probability of A occurring? Yeah, 26. X. No, no, what's the probability of A occurring? Oh my god. What's the probability of A occurring? 2x. 2x. And of A and B? X. X. Is 2x twice x? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. So, why How? <laughs> No. So, because it says A is equal, and probability of A is equal to probability of B. This is why I was confused. Oh, I think it's confused because you put in two axes, and it should be just one that describes both. Mm. No, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does it make sense? Like, if you look at that, what's the problem? If I write this down here on the side. What's the probability of A occurring? 2x. Uh, 2x. Probability of A and B? X. X. Is the probability of um, uh, A occurring twice as much as the probability of A and B occurring? Well, yeah, this is twice this. Yeah. Yeah. Now, also, I say the probability of event A is the same as the probability of event B. So if the probability of A is 2x, what must the probability of B be? 2x. 2x. Therefore, what must be here? X. Okay. I also tell you the probability of B is twice the probability of A and B. Well, that's already in the diagram. What's the probability of B? 2x. And is that twice A and B? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so no new information. The probability of A or B. A or B. What is the probability of A or B? That's this one here. What's that equal to? 3x. Uh, is 9 times the probability of neither A nor B? Neither A uh, nor... Oops, that's not a B. So it's, it's, um, no, sorry, I did that wrong. I want the neither A nor B. That's the one on the outside, isn't it? No. Uh, what's the symbol for that? Not A. And is it union or intersection? Let me think. Is it or is it intersection? Intersection. I think it's intersection. That's this one for outside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Oh yeah, you can write it like uh, you can write it like that. Maybe that's a little bit clearer. A U it's the same thing. A union B prime. Right, that's a little clearer though. Um what do I tell you about that? The probability of A or B, that's this one is nine times more than the probability of neither A nor B. Yeah. So what would I write here to make sure... No, I think we might, might have it backwards. This guy is nine times more, I'll write nine X more, than this guy. So what would I have to write here to make sure that this guy is nine times more than this guy. X over three. Because what happens if I multiply this by nine? I get back here. So what goes outside here? X over three. And now how can I find X? Add them all up and they should equal one. X, X, X is three X plus x over 3, that's 3.3, isn't it? 10 over 3x yeah. equals 1. And so, x is 0 0.3. So what we'll have is this Venn diagram. 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.1. Why do you make 9x more It says it in the question.
You ain't got the watch now? But we can't because we've already fixed X. Well, I mean, we can't put 9X here because we've just said that A or B is 3X from our Venn diagram. We can't now change it to 9. Uh, what you could have done, uh, David, is you could have maybe started here and called this 9X. But then that would change what we write in here. What's next? What's next? Can we do the last thing that we did yesterday? Yeah, I was just thinking it might not be a bad idea to do another regression question, huh? What ones did I ask you to do yesterday? Uh, three and four. Three and four. Would I do number four? Yeah. From yesterday? Yeah. I'm going to because there's because there's a lot of calculations. I'll just open up this computer. Has can you press the little button on that switcher box so I can switch to the other? Monitor. The or the input? Which do you think? I don't know. The input. Now, is that switching? Oh, good. Uh, Nikita, do you mind getting a little sure. light, please? Okay. So, from yesterday's lesson, uh, I'll do number four here. Let me just copy the data down first. Uh, what are we putting on the x axis here? Yeah, if you read the story, you'll be able to figure it out perhaps. An, eco an economic student is trying to produce a supply-demand curve for coffee. They have found 10 data points for the supply of coffee to a particular country in the EU. For each level of supply, they have found the average price of coffee for that year. Uh, below is the results. So, what's wrong? What's wrong? Number four from yesterday. Oh, Guys, so uh, I don't know if you've done. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you've done economics before, but the mm -hmm. simple idea is, if you change the supply of something, then the price will change mm -hmm. in response. Yeah. So if you increase, how, like, what's a good example lately? Um, in Ireland, it's beef. So there's been too much beef this year, which then means the price of beef has dropped down because mm -hmm. there's it's so available, you know. Whereas in different years, if there was less beef or... Oh, the other example is with wheat, you know, a crop. <laughs> Not weed. <laughs> wheat. Um, that's very sensitive to the weather. So when there's a bad year, supply is down, then what will happen to the price? Okay. An increase. Okay. So which are we putting on the x-axis here? Supply. Uh, so what are the numbers there? Let's see. 140, yeah. 134. 143. 143. Yep. 143. 139. 136. 126. 126. 120. Okay. Wonderful. Right. Uh, and these are in tons. Uh, this is tons per year. PA. Tons per annum. Mm -hmm. right. Uh, and now the price is in euros per cup. Okay, so uh, average price would be 143 in that year, and then uh, what's it, 149? 147. Whoops, I missed, hang on, sorry, 1.49, and then the next one is after. And 1 4 1 4 1 1 1 and 4 3. Huh? 1.46? Oh no, I feel like I've gone off a little bit here. No, it's okay. 150. 161. And 161. Okay? Now, in the exam, 
we only want to calculate the things we absolutely have to calculate. So if you were to look at the formula book, um, there are two things I'll have to calculate for sure. The small sx and the small sxy. And in order to calculate those, I need big S xx and big S xy and the average x and the average y. Okay, so let's just keep it easy. Let's first calculate the average x. And what I'll do is I'll make a little table here. So in the exam, you could do something similar. You could write mean x equals. And how do we get the mean here? What do we do? Awesome. Add them up and divide by... 10 in this case, yeah. there's 10 of them, yeah? Okay. Excel has a nice function for doing that. And we get this. Okay? Right. Now, what do I do next? Mean Y. And how do I get that? Add up the Ys and divide by 10 and I'll get that. That's the average price. Okay? Now, the next thing we'll have to calculate, so actually, uh, is xx, or x squared. So, I'll need to calculate, what's the first one here? 140 squared, squared which gives me that. And then the next one? 134 squared. Yeah, and all the way down. Now, how do you want me to write it? Do you want me to write it using a sigma or an S to mean sum? S. S. Sum. Which Yeah. Or if you want, I'll just... Actually, you know what? I'll write sum XX. Okay. Yeah. And what's that one? How do I get that one? Uh, sum, sum of all of these. Yeah. There's one more I need to calculate on my table... Uh, for the formula is x, y. Yeah. And how do I get that one? X, x times y. X times y. Yeah. So that's the first one. And then 134 times 1.49 is that. What the fuck? <coughs> okay. And now here I need sum of x, y, x, y equals. And then that one will be sum of Excellent. all these ones. Yeah. Okay. So now what, what's the purpose of this question? So I'm calculating, basically, I need this to calculate these four. Okay. Now that I have these four, I can calculate the line, yeah. mm -hmm. the uh, equation of the line. Now, I'll just switch, uh, well, no, I'll try, and, I'll try and write it here. Who's that? Oh. Um, I don't want to, can I try and write it here? So, if you look at the formula from yesterday, how do you get small sx? X, X, from yesterday, do you have the formula, small yeah. sx? Square root. Yeah, very good. It's square root S, X, X. sum xx yeah. over, N. which in this case N. is 10, ten. yeah, uh, sin minus, sin minus the, average the average squared. squared. Yeah. And now I get this. Uh -huh. Right. How do I get SXY? Uh, big S Hang on, sorry, sorry. Let me just put a little equals here. Right, how do I get SXY? The sum of X times Y. Which is this number? Yeah. Uh -huh. Divided by 10. 10 minus, minus average X yeah. times average Y. Average y. Minus, okay. minus is fine. Mm -hmm. So what this is going to mean, I think, is in the end our line will be going down. Uh, which makes sense. If you increase the supply, you are dropping the price. Yeah. Right. Yes, I think. Uh, are you here? Oh, no, I think you have the wrong room. What room number is it, do you know? I tell you, 
That's either in that black building there, usually, okay. or sometimes it's in the classrooms behind this building. Oh, right. so, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So now we have to get the uh, equation of the line. Yeah. Now, that's kind of hard for me to do in Excel. Uh, I can try. Wow. Will I use paint here? I'll use paint. Um, how do I change the size? Uh, 500. Okay, I'm going to try and write it here with this mouse. It's going to look messy. Um, what's the formula for the equation of the line? Y minus y over h. Y? Whoa. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, fancy. Mm -hmm. Y minus Y average, which yes. is 1.461. Oh, yeah, <laughs> equals. <laughs> oh, that's the other thing I can still calculate. Uh, SXY over SX squared, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, SXY mm -hmm. over. S x squared oh, yeah. equals that's equal to this number oh, divided by this number squared. squared. Oh. Sorry, I think you didn't square. What is that now? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hello. Equals minus zero, zero point. point Zero zero seven zero nine x minus one three six point two. Yeah, there you go. I could actually write it here. That wasn't too bad. Let's try it again. Uh, I'll make it a little bit wider though. Here, okay. Y minus 1.461, yeah? Uh -huh. Equals minus 0 0.00709 times X minus um, 136.2. So what's the last thing to do? What's the last thing I should do? Well, I should rearrange that, shouldn't I? Yeah. Yeah, so can you guys do that for me? Tell me what we get at the end here. So we'll get y equals some number, x plus some number. Oh, you know what? I'll replace the y with their names. What was y again? Price. Price equals minus 0 0.00709 times supply. Uh, and what's the constant at the end, please? Two point four two six seven. Two point four two six seven. Okay, so four three then, is it? Okay. Yeah. Roughly. Is that, is that what you got? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. That seems believable. Um, we can do a very, I'll do a very, very, very quick scatter plot just to check. Where's scatter plot? Here it is. Scatter plot. Well, the scale is just, um, I haven't put in any labels. Uh, add trend line. Um, linear, yes. Display equation. Yep. Isn't that it? Yeah. Minus 0 0.0071, so they round up, plus 2.43. Yeah. Uh, you're early, or are you late? Early, early. Yeah. Can I sit the back? Yes, yes. Uh, that scale is wrong in the graph. Well, not, it's not clear. Yeah? I'm confused. Oh, what? Everything. <laughs> Yeah, but I can't, you know, I can only answer one question at a time. Can you zoom in? 
Can I see? Is which? Like, no, 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 that's big S. So, what's the difference? So, here, a, a small. The, for, the small formulas are the important ones. Yeah. Okay, what about this? It's just notation. Terminology. I'll explain. So suppose, uh, suppose, has a, I wanted you to do something like add up everyone's age in this class. Okay. Okay? I can write it like this. You can ask me. Oh, it? yeah. We just press the button there. Yeah. Uh, suppose I wanted to uh, add up everyone's age in this class. I could write it like this. Okay. Would that be clear? That means sum of age. age. And if you even want to be more particular, you could say age I, and I is 1 to 10, if there's 10 people or whatever. But I don't even have to do that. You know what I mean when I write this. I mean sum all the ages. Mm. Likewise, Haza, I was just trying to show you yesterday that... A big S for me has the same meaning. If I write big S and age here, mm. I mean sum of all the ages. Okay. If I want you to add up everyone's height, I could write sum h. Yeah. If I want you to add up everyone's height squared, I could write sum h squared. Or what way could I write this one? S h and this one S h h. It's just, it's a notation, do you know what I mean? So like a style. The formulas are, the formulas proper are the small s's. Yeah, but we can't, if I use these, I will get the same answer. Which ones? Like these, the big s's. No, because big s and small s are different things. They're different things. This is not the same as that. Okay. Yeah, I know, but like, what's the difference? Do we use them or not? Which? Both. Big S and so Okay, okay, okay. Yes for this one. Yeah. And only if you want to use this symbol for this one. Okay. It's a notation. Um, like, for example, Haza, what does this mean? What's this called? No idea. Yeah, yeah. derivative. Yeah. Is that the only way to write derivative? No. No, no you could write it like this. Yeah. You could write it even like oh. this. So it should give me the same answer. No, 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 no. Uh, this and this are the same. Yeah. This and this are not the same. This and this are the same. This and this are not the same. Oh. Yeah. You mean like instead of writing the sum of s, we write this? <laughs> no, it was worth it, okay? He's got it now. That was totally worth it, okay? Totally worth it. Um, Can now, I take a picture of the x? Yes, switch back. Now, uh, I just want to finish by putting in the comment for this. So, can somebody tell me uh, how do you interpret the number here? The minus 0 0.00709. Uh, a, a unit decrease in supply, yeah. which in this case is one ton, ton per annum. Mm -hmm. So, if you reduce supply by one ton, you will reduce your... Uh, Coffee prices. No, that's not right. Sorry, I said it backwards, didn't I? Sorry, sorry. If you increase the supply by one ton, then you will reduce the price of coffee per cup by not even one cent. 0 0.007 euros. So about 0.7 of a, a cent. What's the mean 2.43? Now, this is an example of where the model is not so realistic. Okay? What's the meaning of 2.43 here? Uh, what was the price? Yeah, how much? No, no, no. Uh, it's, what's the 
supply. When there's no when supply there's and much is copy. Yeah, which you realise is a little bit uh, ridiculous yeah, because if there's possible <laughs> though. Hmm? Yeah, if you're running down maybe reserves. But I still think if so, if a country suddenly had no supply of coffee, then I think the price would be more than 243. So my point is, uh, the graph is linear, but I don't think it's linear when you get near to the y-axis. Yeah. You know, I think what would happen in real life is if you drop the supply down, then I'd expect the price to actually right. shoot up. Yeah. A curve. Yeah, a curve near the y-axis, right? You want the price to be becoming extremely high when the supply becomes extremely tight. Okay. So now, yes. so, so now in each of the line of this, this question, yeah. do we get like the mean average of x and y and the sum of x, x, x? Yeah, so just guys, just to finish, as has asked me, what things do you need to calculate so that you can use the formulas? You need to calculate these four guys. Yeah. Mean x and mean y is easy. XX, well, you'll need to make another column of XX if you want. And then XY, you should make another column of XY. And then once you have those four, you can use the formula, and then you're done. S underscore X. Oh, you're looking for the media room. Is yeah. A couple of people have come by. I don't know if you were given the wrong room. Do you know what number it is? It said to have Omaha. But it didn't say what number? No, it said number nine. Really? Yeah. You're not the first one to come by. Uh, that must be a typo. Um, usually the media people are sometimes in the back or there's a little bit of a or even just next door. There's a little phone shell skin.